Master Ted, and uh, he got there safely, and um, he told me that to tell you he's expecting great things not only over there, but while he's gone over here, amen? So uh, praise the Lord. Before I get into the word, I just want to make mention of the fact that I, I brought some of my materials in the form of books that I've published uh, throughout the years. I've been in the ministry 36 years, as well as uh, teachings uh, on CDs, uh, DVDs. <coughs> And I also brought some uh, VHSs. Those are free of charge. VHSs and cassettes. Some people still have a cassette player. There's a table back there. It's free. You can take as many as you want. Uh, we've had people send them overseas. So um, <clears throat> these obviously are, are not going to be given away, but uh, you can purchase them. Uh, this is entitled Learning How to Forgive. You know, so many people are walking around with unforgiveness, and they don't know how to forgive people. And that's a very, very dangerous thing because your faith will never work unless you walk in love. And part of walking in love is you've got to forgive people. Amen. And so that teaches you how to, how, to, how to forgive. They the wait upon the Lord. How many of you are waiting for God to do something in your life? Well, there's a proper way to wait. Amen. And, uh, and we have to learn what the Bible is about that, how to wait on God uh, and on the manifestation. When riches come, this is a, you know, God wants us all to prosper. Boy, I didn't get one amen on that. I said God wants us all to prosper. Big time. And the primary reason is for us to be a blessing. Uh, because, you know, you can't be a blessing when you're broke. You can't support the gospel. You can't help another person. However, you know, you, you have to be careful because, you know, when you're broke, you've got no place to go, so you go to church on Sundays. Because even if you don't have a car, somebody will take you. But when money comes into your hands, now you have other temptations. And I pastored 14 years, two congregations, and I saw it happen uh, to a man in, in my church. Uh, when riches came... He backslid. Amen. You know, he came to our church. He was on, he was on, on drugs, separated from his wife. And uh, God delivered him from drugs. He accepted the Lord. His wife got saved. They both got uh, back together, <clears throat> got a job. And then all of a sudden, he stopped coming to church after a while. And when I called him up, he was working. He was working. Uh, got a settlement of $100,000, I think it was. Never tithed off of it. Uh, gave $100 to the church. So <clears throat> after a while, he went back on drugs, and, um, and about a year later, his wife died. They were only in their 30s, and a year after that, he died in a car crash. Uh, so, you know, when riches come, you have, to, you have to guard yourself when you start prospering, amen? And then beware of false prophets. All of the writers in the New Testament, with the exception of James, all the, the, the ones that wrote the epistles, talk about false prophets. It's one of the things that God, the devil is using in the last days to get people off track. This, this will help you to distinguish between the, the prophet's ministry, a uh, true prophet and a false prophet, and the difference between the prophet's ministry and the simple gift of prophecy, how they are operating in the church. There's five CDs. Um, and then I've written a number of books. I'll just make mention three of them. God's grace for reigning in life, the favor of God, how you can grow in the favor of God. There are things that you can do to increase the favor of God. The Bible teaches that. Basic Bible truth every believer should know. This is a great book to give to even unbelievers. We've had people save, heal, filled with the Holy Ghost, just reading this book. It covers a, a number of different subjects. Prayer, key to moving God. This will help you uh, to develop a good prayer life. And then prosperity, God's will for you. That and many other things uh, are in the back. And like I said, the ones directly in the phone with the sign on, they're free of charge. You can take uh, whatever you want, give them out, use them, whatever. All right, I want you to open your Bibles <clears throat> to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. And I want to talk to you this morning about the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. In Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 3, it says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us has blessed us as past tense, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So you already are a possessor of all the blessings of Christ. To, to pray, God bless me, is, is, is ludicrous because he has already said that you have all the blessings of Christ. Amen. Now, those blessings are compacted in the blessing of Abraham. Are you following me? All right. They're compacted in the blessing of Abraham. Somebody said, well, what is the blessing of Abraham? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Go over to Galatians, the third chapter. It says this, <clears throat> verse 13. Christ has, that's past tense, 
redeemed us from the curse of the law. Well, the first thing we want to establish, what is the law? Well, the law is the first five books of the Bible, commonly known as the Pentateuch, the word by Moses. In the law of Moses, you'll find a threefold curse, poverty, sickness, and sin. Now, if you did a short version of a uh, of, of study, uh, just reading Deuteronomy 28, the whole chapter, the first 14 verses deal with the blessing of Abraham. But verse 15 through 61 deal with the curse. And so you'll see that threefold curse in there. So we can say this is Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, or from poverty, sickness, and sin. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse us everyone who hangs on the tree. So, so we see here where, where, where it happened on the cross. At the cross of Calvary, Jesus became a curse for us. He became sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, He who knew no sin was made sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. There is no other way to be righteous. You can't be righteous by good works. You can't be righteous simply because you go to church. Uh, you know, you're righteous when you receive the righteousness which comes through faith in what Jesus did for you. Free gift. Amen. Amen. And so then, in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, is that he carried away our sicknesses and our diseases, particularly if you read it out of the Amplified Bible. Uh, he carried away our sicknesses and diseases, and by his stripes we were healed. So he actually, when we went to, uh, went to the cross of Calvary, he took all the infirmities upon himself and carried them away. So we don't have to carry them. Every, every morning, my wife and I have communion. We didn't do it this morning because uh, we're pressed for time, you know, making it here. We live an hour away and want to get here early. Uh, and then on top of that, we, we know that you have communion here. But we, do, we have it every morning. And we, de we declare, amen, what Christ has done for us. We remember what he has done for us every morning. And we confess that he's carried away our sicknesses and our diseases. Since he carried them away, we no longer have them. Yeah. And, and we declare our, that we believe what God said about it. And that 1 Peter 2.24 says, By whose stripes you are healed. So that's the other curse that he bore. Uh, and then in 2 Corinthians 8.9, it says, He who was rich, and that's, look up the, heap, the Greek word, it's talking about maturely. He who was rich, because Jesus was not poor on this earth. The, 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 don't, don't disregard those, you know, religious-looking uh, paintings that religious people paint of Jesus, like, like you know, like he's starving or like he's weak or like he's, you know, uh, you no, know, he's none of those things. He was rich. He was rich from the day he was he was he was born, when the Magi's came from the from the from the east and a car car caravan of them, not just three of them, caravan. They, the religion depicts three because they, they, it's incense, myrrh, and gold. But there was a caravan of them. So he was rich since he, since he was young. It was impossible for somebody to be poor if, if they lived, you know, in accordance to the, to the law of Moses. They were blessed financially as part of God's covenant. Matter of fact, he wore such nice clothes that when he was, he was, he was crucified, they parted his clothes in four, four parts. The four soldiers that were uh, doing the... the, uh, the uh, nailing to the, to the cross and, and uh, had that duty. And then the tunic was without seam. Only, only rich people wore that kind of clothing. And they knew it was valuable, so they didn't want to tear it up, so they, they, they cast lots. It's like you know, casting dice to see who would win it. But he became poor. Why? Because he wanted to redeem us. He hung on the cross naked with a crown of thorns. Why, 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 did, why, why a crown of thorns? Because when you read <clears throat> Genesis, the uh, second chapter you'll find that when Adam sinned, God pronounced a curse on him. And he curses the ground. And you're going to toil. In other words, you're going to have to work excessively hard and it's going to produce thorns. The crown of thorns represents poverty. Well, he wore that crown, hung naked on the cross. He who was rich became poor. That through, you, through his poverty, you, may be, you might be made rich. And that second word, rich, in the Greek, is talking about material wealth. God wants you to be rich. God's not opposed to people being rich. He's opposed to people trusting in riches. Amen? And being covetous. He's, he, he wants you to be rich. Uh, it's a testimony unto the Lord. And, and, and then you can do a whole lot more. Not only, not only to help you know, ministers preach the gospel, but to help people in need. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in need. Amen? We don't have a middle class in America anymore. People that should you know, be relaxing, retiring, are working couple of jobs just to make ends meet because they can't make it on Social Security. 
Well, shout me down because I'm preaching, so it goes to truth anyway. <clears throat> it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curses everyone who hangs in the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Well, the Gentiles were the, the, the non Jews. The Jews were the only ones that had a covenant. The Abrahamic covenant only belonged to the Jews before Jesus. But now, because of Jesus, it's come on the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? All of us. All of us that are not Jewish. That the blessed Abraham had come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, there's a twofold meaning there. The promise of the Spirit, one, is the promise of the Spirit made to Abraham. But also the promise of the Spirit is the promise of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? Uh, <clears throat> now, again, that blessing was, many blessings were compacted in that blessing because the blessing of Abraham was threefold. It was spiritual, it was material, and it was physical. Uh, you know, in Genesis 12, you know the story, God uh, uh, appears to, to Abraham and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you that you may be a blessing. And, and by, by chapter 13, verse 2, it says, and Abraham was very rich. He's already loaded. And because nephew, through association, hung out with Abraham, he got loaded too. Amen. That's why you can't be going to a poor preaching church. Hey, you know, where, where they talk about being sick for the glory of God, you know, and God doesn't want you to have anything. No, you, you know, association will affect you. Amen. It affected Lot in a positive way. He was loaded too. Just one chapter. Glory to God. But you'll find something about Abraham. He was obedient. And he was 75 years old when he started his journey with God. And then had the tools that you and I have. He was obedient to God. That's what it takes, folks. See, a lot of people are not obedient to God. That's why they don't get anything from God. I know people that are perpetually always in trials, always seeking prayer. That's, that's not, that's not, there's something wrong there. We all face trials. But if you, if you live in a, in a perpetual state of trials, there's something wrong. It's not with God. Hello? Have you ever met somebody like that? They're always in trouble. I mean, every, every like every week, it's some kind of turmoil, trial, you know. They live in that state. There's something wrong, and it's not with, with God, it's with them. And I guarantee you, it boils down to they're not obedient. They're not doing what they know to do. Hello? See, the Bible says it's the doer, James 1, 20, 22 through 27. It's the doer of the word that's blessed, not the hearer. God is not impressed about how, how much you and I shout in church, how, how loud we sing. Hello? How emotional we get. He's not impressed with any of that. Now, none of those things are wrong if, if they're done decently in order. In other words, if they're done in the spirit, if they're not done in the flesh, you draw attention to yourself. But there's, there are people, you know, in the church today that they shout, I mean, hallelujah, amen, amen. I mean, they're loud. But they leave, they, leave, they don't do what the word says. <laughs> I, there's nobody like that here. I know that. I'm talking about, the, you know, the other church down the block, the church of the frozen chosen, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now go over to 2 Peter 1. See, we already have the blessing. The key is to find out how to, how, how, how to get this thing to work for us. Because it does work. Let me say it on this side in English. It does work. Somebody said, well, I wish it would work for me. It don't work, it don't work by wishing. It works by believing. It works by knowing. First of all, having a revelation. Hello? In your heart, not in your head. See, the word has to become reality in here. If, if it's just a reality up here, it don't work until it gets in here. How does it go from here to here? You've got to meditate on it day and night. Hmm? You can't be an occasional listener of the word, you know? You know, some people occasionally pop into church. Occasionally. Hmm? Then when they do come, they don't, God forbid, they, I mean, they, they bring their Bible or a notebook to write some notes down. They, 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 they're never, never, never going to walk in victory. They'll never get the word from their head to their heart because God said to Joshua, and that wasn't just for Joshua, that's for all of us. Joshua, one day, he said, this book of the law, now, 
Joshua just had the law. We have the Old and New Testament. And all the promises in the Old and the New Testament belong to us. That's why we have a better covenant with better promises. The Jews only had the Old Testament. We got both. Amen. And everything I see in there for Israel belongs to me. Are you following? Why? Because that was part of the Abrahamic covenant. And because of Jesus, me the Gentile has come in. Glory. <laughs> I'm a joint there. So are you. But it has to become a reality by meditating on it day and night. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on what? Day and night. You got to speak in line with the word. I hear Christians talking. Uh, you know, I was just talking to a lady yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I'm trying to talk to her, you know, and she's talking about everybody got the flu. And she, that's all she, I've, a couple of times that I've met her, that's all she talked about, the flu. And she's scared to get the flu. And she's scared to get out bronchitis. Guess what? She keeps talking about that she's going to get it too. Because you can have what you say. Hello? I'm not going to get the flu. I'm not planning on getting the flu. Amen? Somebody, you get a flu shot? No, I don't trust them flu shots. I got a better shot. The blood. The covenant. Amen? And, and, and uh, you know, a couple, about four or five days ago, I mean, s s stuff trying to come on me, boy. And my wife would tell you, within a day, I, 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 got, I got rid of it. I got rid of it. How'd you do that? James 4, 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. So I wasn't feeling good. I mean, everything hurt, even my hair. <laughs> She'll tell you, I had the chills, man. I mean, everything hurt. I was walking. Matter of fact, Pastor Ted came over. It was Monday. He came over for dinner. And I was walking around like this. <laughs> I felt so, so bad. And at one point, we were talking in, 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 in our dining room table, and I had to leave them, them to the talk and lay on the couch. I was feeling so horrible. But listen to how, how when I told, told my wife what I was experience I didn't claim the sickness I said I'm experiencing these symptoms see I never sign for the package when UPS comes if you don't sign for the package they won't deliver you sign for the package you get the package so the devil always try to get you to sign the package how do you do that by claiming it so this lady she kept talking about the flu and she's afraid and people are, well, I, I, and I'm trying to tell you know what the Bible says and she you know I couldn't penetrate her right I feel sorry for her. Well, that's why the Bible says my people have gone into captivity because of lack of knowledge, Isaiah 5, 13. Huh? My people perish, Hosea 4, 6, because of lack of knowledge. And she's walking around now, not only afraid, she, she's not only uh, afraid to catch the flu, she's afraid of the flu. And the kind of stuff that the devil is wheeling out now kill, kills people. Why? Well, because we're living in the last days, and the devil knows his time is short. And he's come upon the inhabitants of the earth with great wrath. Revelation 12, verse 11. You, have you noticed it's harder now than it, than it has been in years gone by? Amen? Just, just to live. The level of stress that people are dealing with? Hmm? Second, did you find Second Peter 1? If you didn't find it by now, you're not going to find it, so just... Find somebody that found this. I've got to read your Bible with you. <laughs> Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace is God's favor. And peace be multiplied to you. How? In the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. See, if you want more favor and if you want more peace, you've got to get what? Get to know God. How do you get to know God? Through his word. You can't get to know God through feeling. Huh? Because feelings change. Hello? I don't always feel like going to preach. Particularly when I pastored. Huh? But you know what? I, I don't, it, it, it's like being married. You can't be married by feeling. Hey, <laughs> Johnny, that was a good one, man. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I see you bold, man. Some of these guys are afraid to say anything. Look over at his wife and say, can I say hello? Can I say amen? A feeling is nothing, you know. I actually wrote a, a song about that. Feeling, nothing more than feeling. <laughs> now, you got to get to know God through his word. He is God. The word is God. John, the first chapter, says so. 
Grace and peace multiply in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things. Hmm? Has given to us his past tense. His divine power did that. How did he do it? When he raised Jesus from the dead. It was his power that raised Jesus from the dead. And when he did, the blessing of Abraham came on us and all things been given to us. Well, as his divine power has been given to us, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Life is natural life. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drive. Godliness is the godly life we're supposed to, to live. You don't have to backslide. Hmm? I've been serving God now 37 years. I'm not back, backsliding one day in my life. Hello? And I'm planning on backsliding. Why? Well, because what's back there? I know where I came from. <laughs> Ain't nothing back there for me. Huh? And, and, and I know what I need to do to keep moving forward. I've got to keep myself strong. I've got to stay in the Word every day. I've got to spend time with God. I've got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hello? And you know, when, I, when I'm not out ministering, I have a local church. I have a spiritual one of my spiritual sons pastors in Trenton, and I, I, I attend church over there when I'm not on the road. Are you following me? So, and my wife and I are in the ward every day. Every night we have, we, we eat dinner, you know, in front of the television, and what do we do? We watch half hour of preaching. Sometimes Jerry Seville, Bill Winston. We even watch Charles Capps. He's up in heaven, but he's still preaching the gospel down here on TV. <laughs> Amen. Watched him the other night. What are we doing? Feeding our spirit? She's in the, she's, she, you know, she, she stays home. She, she works at home. What does she do? She takes care of me. And, and she's in the Word every day. Huh? I come home, she's in the Word. You know, and now she's not laying around, she, you know, she's cleaning, she's doing whatever, she's doing cooking, but she's in the Word. Technology today. Pop in a CD. Amen. You can listen to the Word. Now it says, by which have been given to us, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Notice again, God emphasizing you got to get knowledge. By which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the, the, the corruption that is in the world through lust. God wants you to become like him on this earth. Let me say that on this side here. God wants us to become like him on this earth. Amen. Now, I didn't say become deities. Don't run out of here saying, oh, brother, I said we're going to become gods. Now, I didn't. The Mormons say that. I don't. No. But he wants you to become like him so that the world sees God through you. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans 8, 19 that the whole creation is waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, the King James says, groaneth. The new King James is waiting that the sons of God be revealed so they can be set free. You know, when Jesus walked on this earth, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10, 38. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to be the deliverers. Amen? We're supposed to walk in the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. We're supposed to produce the character of God, the power of God, and the prosperity of God, and show it to the people of the world. Hmm? But what have we been showing the world? Think about it. Strife, division. And thank God, you know, in, in the last couple of decades, the, the church has been woken up by men and women that God has anointed to get them out of the poverty mentality. And we're seeing, you know, ministries grow and prosper and stuff. But we're not, we're not where we should be. And it should be our desire to glorify God on this earth in every aspect. should be our desire. But we're not going to do it, you know, watching as the stomach turns, general gossip. And then, what was the other one? Uh, what, was the, what was that other soap opera? All, my, all, my, all, my, all, all, all the idiot children. You know, disgruntled housewives. Is that? <laughs> See, you're not going to get it there. Huh? 
Matter of fact, her, her and I, you know, I, I, she, she liked it a lot, uh, Family Feud. And, and uh, so I started watching it. And Steve Harvey's a, f a real funny guy. But just the other day, we just decided we were going to stop watching it because it's just getting, gotten crude. Right. You know? And yet he's a very funny guy. Uh, but, you know, just the answers are very, very crude. So we just said, oh, we're not going to watch that anymore. Are you following me? So God wants you to be a partaker of his divine nature. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.3 that Jesus was the express image of him. And in John 14.9 he said, if he that has seen has seen the Father. Well, what does the Bible say? Over there, I think it's 1 John, the fourth chapter. As he is, so are we in this earth, right? We are supposed to be the representations. Matter of fact, the Bible calls us ambassadors. In 2 Corinthians 5.18, we are ambassadors for Christ. What does Nikki Haley do over at the UN? She represents what? The U.S. What do our ambassadors do in other countries? They represent the U.S. But notice that they live in nice embassies. They drive around in nice cars. They dress nice. Amen? You don't see ambassadors looking like bums with raggedy jeans, driving some old jalopy. Hello, even if they're in third world countries. Why? Because they are representing the greatest nation in the world, the United States of America. Well, guess what? We are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it's time that we represent them right. That we walk in love and in faith, but that we manifest the glory of God and the prosperity of God. And that's the will of God for us. And it can be attained if you want to do what it takes. But yeah, some people, you know, they're stuck in a rut. They think that it's just enough because they come to church on Sunday. No, it's not. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bro, that's a good message. It's not enough just to come to church on Sunday. Not enough just to come to church on Sunday and Wednesday. Hello? God wants us to be doers of the word. To produce fruit. And that kind of obedience and that kind of commitment will cause the things that God has promised in the Bible that you hear other people getting manifest in your life. Hmm? Aren't you tired of hearing about all these other people getting blessed and you're struggling? Huh? Well, the problem is not on God. You know, God has no respect for persons. The problem is always with us. And we have to be honest with ourselves and, 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 and do with uh, what Jeremy was talking about before, about judging ourselves. Examine, the Bible talks about examining yourself if you're in the faith. 1 Corinthians 15. Well, it got quiet in this Presbyterian church, didn't it? Yeah. All right. Now, go over to James, the first chapter. I quoted this before, but we're going to read it. See, the Bible says in Colossians 2.10 that we are complete in him. God has done everything he needs to do for us. Amen? So we have to stop asking God to bless us. He's already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. We already got it. We got everything we need. We got to learn how to activate it. It comes through knowledge. It comes through knowledge. We have to have, it. We have, to have ears with the Holy Spirit says to us. See? And God, God will say different things to different people because everybody's in a different level. Amen? See, God doesn't expect for you, if you just got born again, you know, a year ago, two years ago, he doesn't expect for you to walk in the level that I'm walking in. Why? Because I've been in this longer than you have. But he does expect for you to be obedient to the things that he tells you. And the thing that, the nice thing about God is God doesn't overwhelm us. If God ever showed us, after we get born again, all the stuff that's still wrong with us, it, w it, it would discourage us. But he deals with areas in our lives. Amen. That's why the Bible said we go from faith to faith, glory to glory. He'll deal with this area, and you got that down pat, and you're feeling pretty good, and all of a sudden, boom, he shows you another area here. Okay, it's time to work on that one. And then he may give you a reprieve, you know, a couple of weeks or so, and then he'll show you something else. Huh? That's the way. And, we, and, we, and, and as we cooperate with him, as we yield to him, and begin to make changes in those areas, then the glory is turned up. The blessing begins to manifest. And you know, Paul talked about, when I come to you, I'm going to come with the fullness of, of the blessing. 
So this blessing has different levels. And he talked about coming to them with the fullness of the blessing. I want to, I, I want to experience the fullness of the blessing. I, 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 you know, I, 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 I see, I've, I've seen the hand of God moving in my life, doing things. I mean, one thing he did for me is bring me a good wife. And I've seen, and, I, and I've seen things happen. But I'm not walking in the fullness of it. Amen? But I want to, and I'm going to do what it takes. Now, in James' first chapter, verse 19, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Or in other words, the right conduct that God requires is what, what it's talking about. You ever hear somebody talking about they're mad at God? Have you ever heard a Christian say that? I'm just mad at God. Oh, really? Why? Well, because I've, I've been tithing for a whole year, and I've not seen any windows open on a contract. I can't even pay my bills. Well, going down that avenue, honey, isn't going to produce the righteousness that God requires. And you're only digging your hole deeper. It says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness, that means humility. Humility. You ha have a teachable spirit. Some people don't have a teachable spirit. I know I pastored some of them. I had a guy one time in my church came for counseling. And so I, you know, my office, I had a three-story building. My office was in the third floor. I had one of my elders there. And I, I don't want to go into detail what he came about, but I'll get, to give you a, a short uh, Comparison. I tried to tell him the sky is blue, and the guy insisted that it's red. Okay, you get to get the picture? <clears throat> so he comes to counseling, you know, and I'm trying to tell him what the answer is to his problems, <clears throat> and he's trying to justify himself because he doesn't want to hear what I had to say to him. So, you know, we went around that block several times, and, and I said, you know, I'm wasting, I'm wasting my time with this guy. So I said to him, look, here's what you do. Go downstairs to the sidewalk. Go bang your head against the sidewalk several times. When you get enough knots in your head, come back and see me. I can help you. <laughs> and he left there cursing me. <laughs> well, that's, that's basically what's going to happen when they're going to learn things. I call it the school of hard knocks. Because God gives grace to the humble, and he resists the proud. Uh -huh. And some people, the only way they learn things, they've got to be humble. If they don't humble themselves. You know, Paul had to be humble by, by God. Before he knew Jesus, he was a real arrogant, proud man because he was so strict in his religion. But God knocked him off his high horse. Amen. And he got humble real fast. Now it says, verse uh, 22, But be a doer of the word, not a hero, uh, hearers only, deceiving yourselves. See, when you hear the word, don't do it, you're deceiving yourself. You're lying to yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word of God, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Notice how the terminology changes from doer of the word to doing the work. Why? Because it's work to do the word. It takes effort. Huh? And some people don't do the work because they're lazy. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good now. This one will be blessed in what he does. Then notice the blessing is released by what? Doing what the word says. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is, is useless. In other words, if you don't watch what comes out of your mouth, you know, your heart bears witness to the fact that by whose stripes you were healed, your heart knows that's true, but you speak contrary to it, you're deceiving your heart. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep one unspotted from the world. In other words, get involved ministering to other people. When was the last time you, you witnessed about Jesus? 
to somebody? When's the last time you brought somebody to church? Well, it got quiet in here, didn't it? Yeah. Real quiet. Must be hitting a nerve. Amen. Now look at Proverbs, the 10th chapter, verse 22. Now this blessing of Abraham is the same blessing that was upon Adam. Not a different blessing, it's the same blessing. It went to Adam, Adam lost it. God put it on Noah. Amen. Then he put it on Abraham. And then that blessing belonged to every Jew. Huh? Why do you think that the Jewish people, despite the fact that they have been so persecuted, you talk about people being persecuted. Amen. The devil has tried to destroy the Jewish race. Yeah, they, they continue to thrive. And many large corporations are, are owned by Jewish people. And if you go to Israel, you'll find that the, 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 the medical, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, answers that they have for, for, for sickness and disease and cures in Israel. Why? That blessing? That blessing? See? That blessing? Now, in Proverbs, the 10th chapter, verse 22, it says this, The blessing of the Lord maketh one rich. And that word rich is referring to wealth. It's, it's, uh, in the Hebrew, it's talking about wealth. It means to accumulate, to grow, to make rich, to gain riches, to become wealthy. The blessing of the Lord make one rich, and he hath no sorrow with it. The word sorrow in the Hebrew here means to toil, labor. In other words, excessive labor, hardship, grievous. It's the same word that God used to speak to uh, when, he, when he spoke the, the curse to Adam. And he says, from now on, you're going to work the ground by the, brow, the sweat of your brow, and it's going to produce thorns, and you're going to toil means to work excessively hard. God wants you and I to work, but he doesn't want us to work excessively hard. He doesn't want, want you to be working three jobs. And I know people that do, Christian people. Why? He wants, he wants you to rely on the blessing. Amen. But in order to do that, you've got to do what Jesus said in Matthew, the, Matthew the, the sixth chapter. See, know and realize that the blessing of Abraham is on you. Amen. It's already on you. But you need to have faith in it and you need to activate it by being obedient to God. Obedient to God. Obedient to his word, number one. And obedience in the New Testament to the prompting of the Holy Ghost. See, because Romans 8, 14 says, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And how many know that God will tell you to do certain things that are not specifically in the Bible, but they're in line with the Bible? Huh? God may impress upon you, go and give Brother Joe $100. How many know you won't find that in the Bible? Huh? But how many know that's in the Bible? Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it down, shall men give into your bosom. The Holy Spirit can say, go and buy your neighbor, by the way, she's not even saved, groceries. How many know that? You won't find that in the Bible, but it's in line with the Bible. See, you have to follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and God will tell you to do certain things, and you will not always know exactly why. But there's always a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. And I tell you, when God tells me to do something, I drop everything. I drop everything. I went to, to Mexico and Went to this church, and, you know, my wife is my chauffeur over there because she knows how to get around, and plus, they're crazy over there how they drive, so she does the driving. Uh, and we went to preach in this church, and, you know, it's just a little humble church, you know, with dirt, dirt floors and just a humble pastor. And, uh, you know, I bless in some of my materials and, and stuff. And so we left there, and this, you know, she half hour away from the church 
And the Lord wanted me to give him a certain message that I had. I'd already left. And so we tried calling the pastor. We couldn't reach him or anything. And it took us several days. But I found him and gave him that message. I don't know why God wanted me to give him that message. But he told me to do it. It was in CD form. There's a reason for it. The key is just to obey. That produces blessing. One of my favorite scriptures found in Job 36, 11. It says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their years and uh, they will spend their years in prosperity and, they, and, and their days in pleasure, or vice versa. Their, the days in prosperity and the years in pleasure. If they obey and serve him. That's a pretty good deal. I don't know about you, but I like pleasure and I like prosperity. Huh? Don't you? If you don't, there's something wrong with you. We'll pray for you later. They've got to give you some brains. Huh? It's nice to have pleasure. I'm talking about godly pleasure. Not all pleasure is ungodly. There's godly pleasure. Huh? Having, having enough money when you can go to the restaurant and don't look at the, the, at the price in the menu is a good pleasure. Huh? Are you following me? You know, being able to go and take a nice vacation with your wife and you got the money to do it, that's a nice pleasure. Nothing wrong with it. Huh? Now, Matthew 6, 31. Now, see, this is why Jesus said, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. Notice, they seek. Why well, they seek material things? Well, we shouldn't be that way. Now, do we have to go to work? Of course we do. Matter of fact, one of the ways that God gives you seed to sow is through your job, according to Ephesians 4.28. But God doesn't want you to be seeking things. He wants you to be seeking him. And people spend a lot of time seeking things. Huh? When we should be seeking him. Seeking to please him. It says, all these things that the, the Gentiles seek for your brother, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now, the Amplified Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and it gives you a, a, a greater revelation of right, righteousness. His, his right standing and right doing. And all the, see, because we are righteous the moment we accept Jesus, but then there, there's a right doing side of it. You've got to practice doing the right thing. I didn't say you had to be perfect. I said you've got to practice doing the right thing. If you haven't had to miss it in the process, you ask God to forgive you, according to 1 John 1 9. And, and you confess it and forsake it and you'll have mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. That's why it's such a damnable heresy what, what Joseph Prince teaches and he's published in a book that a believer never has to confess his sins. That's a damnable heresy. That God would be unjust to punish you for your sins. Oh yeah? You ever read over there in Hebrews, the 10th chapter? Where it says God will judge his people it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God? See, these are, these are wrong teachings that lead people down the wrong way. That'll cause people to think, well, once saved, always saved. doesn't make a difference. You know what we do? Because it's all by grace. And there are people who have that mentality. Listen to teachings like that. Hmm? You know, writing that the epistles of John were written to the agnostics. No, they weren't. Agnostic people are spiritually dead people. This is a spiritual book that can only be understood by people that are born again. That's why before you were born again, you can read the Bible. It didn't make any sense to you. Why? Because it's spiritually discerned. Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. This is a spiritual book. Spiritual dead people cannot understand this book. And how in the world would God write an epistle to spiritually dead people? They can't understand it. Plus, this is the covenant. It's called the old covenant, the new covenant. This is for covenant people. And you're not in covenant unless you made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know? I, I, I don't know where these ministers get these. Well, I know where they get them. They get them from the devil. That's where they get them from. They just read the Bible. That's why I said study yourself and show yourself a man approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. People say all kinds of stuff. I hear them saying, well, God's only given us 120 years. No, he did. That's another one. God's only giving you a hundred. No, he didn't. When God told that to Noah, he was talking about his generation. 
They gave him 120 years to repent. That's how long it took Noah to, to get the ark done and preach. He gave him 120 years to repent. They wouldn't repent. And he, you know, had to destroy him with a flood. Noah got saved and his family. Now, all you got to do is read the Bible. After Noah, people lived beyond 120 years. Abraham lived beyond 175 years. So how in the world can somebody preach that? And I, I, I can mention some ministers, and I won't, because they're good ministers. But they're, they're in error. That's why you can't just swallow everything you hear. Acts 17, 11, you have to be like the church in Berea. They were more noble than the church in Thessalonica. They received the word of God with gladness, but they examined the scriptures to see what was being taught is in there. There's another one. If I mention this minister, everybody know him. He says that Melchizedek was uh, Noah's grandson. No, he wasn't. He was a Christ incarnate in the Old Testament. You read the book of Genesis, uh, 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 the, the 14th chapter. You read Hebrews, the 7th chapter. You'll find out he had no genealogy. And he, had to, he has the same titles that Jesus had. He's the Prince of Peace. Huh? And when Jesus rose up from the dead, God said, I've made you a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Do you think God's going to make Jesus the high priest after an order of a fallen human being? But yet there are great ministers that preach that kind of stuff. Now, are they good ministers? Yeah, they're good ministers, but you've got to learn how to be as smart as a cow. Eat the hay, spit out the sticks. I don't care how big their name is on television. Judge the word that, that is preached by the word of God. When I pastored for 14 years, two congregations, I used to tell my people, I said, you know what? I said, I know you love me. I know you trust me. I know you know I'm a man of God of integrity, but I want you to judge everything I preach. You're not going to offend me. Well, why did I do that? Because I wanted to put their confidence in God and in his word, not in me. Because men can get off. There's a very popular pre preacher that, that ran around uh, I'm preaching with Creflo Dollar and, 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 and somebody else, and he got off. And now, he, now he's, a, he's, a, he's a Buddhist. Yeah, he believes in Jesus, but he's a Buddhist. And he's following some dead yogi's, uh, you know, teachings. This guy was on national television. He did an, um, did an interview on Channel 7 down in Florida where he, where he said that. I heard it with my own ears. He said, the things that I, that I used to believe don't resonate with me anymore. I've been on a spiritual journey. So I believe in Jesus, but I believe in, in Buddhism. Found peace through Buddhism. Got deceived. Sad. Sad. And God only knows how many people he took down that road with him. Sad. That's why you got to be very careful. Amen? Yeah, and you got to belong to a good local church like this one, where you got to be protected, where you're going to be told the truth. Hmm? Look at Deuteronomy 28. Let me, let, me, let me begin to close here. Deuteronomy 28. Are you getting anything out of this? If your toes got stepped on, don't worry about it. We'll pray for, for, for you to get healed later. God never, never condemns, but he does rebuke. He does correct us. And we should be, listen, you should be thankful if you're in a church where the pastor is used by God to correct you. If you're going to a church where the pastor's always telling you how sweet, oh, you're so sweet, you're so sweet, and you know, they're always huggy-duggy and pampering you, that's not a good church. All right? Because the Apostle Paul, anointed by the Spirit of God, told Timothy, his spiritual son, who was pa pastoring a church in Ephesus, who historians say had 30,000 members, he said, and they didn't meet all at once. They met in houses because if the Roman soldiers saw them gathering together like that, they would have thought it was an uprising. But he, he, but he says to them, preach the word. Second uh, Timothy 4, around verse 1 and 2. He said, preach the word. In season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Notice he majored what? On the correcting part. How many have kids? How many had kids? I mean, you know, I mean, they're all grown now. They're all, yeah. I don't know, when your kids are living at home, you've got to spend more time correcting them than you to tell them how wonderful they are. It sounds something like this. How many times do I have to tell you we pay for electricity here? Shut the lights off and you're not using it. You want money? Your chores are to throw the garbage out. You haven't thrown the garbage out in three days. It stinks in here. 
Haven't I told you to clean your room? There are things growing in this room. It stinks in here. Huh? Sound, sound familiar? Yeah. Now, every once in a while, you might tell them how wonderful they are, but you spend a whole lot more time correcting them. Why? Because you don't love them now because you want them to grow up right, develop good habits. Well, God's the same way. And, and, and so, you know, some people, they go to church, and they hear something they don't like, makes them feel uncomfortable, out the door, they're gone. Uh, they want to find a nice, comfortable church where they're always telling them nice things, you know, patty cake gospel, feel good gospel. Everybody's so wonderful, so good. We're all going to heaven together. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? No, it's not. No, it's not. Chapter 28, Deuteronomy 1. Chapter 28, verse 1. Now, it shall come to pass. That's, that's, I mean, that is, leaves no doubt that it shall come to pass. Not maybe. No, no. It shall come to pass. If. Now, here's the condition. If. You diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. I already told you God speaks two ways. How? One is the logos, the written word. The other is the rhema, the spoken word, what the Holy Spirit speaks to you to do. All right? Now, notice that it says that you're to do it why? Diligently. Now, what does it mean to be diligent? It means this, constant, listen to this, constant in effort to accomplish something. Constant in effort to accomplish something. And persisting in doing anything. What does persistent mean? It means persisting, especially in spite of opposition, obstacles, discouragement, etc. Persevering. It means you continue to do it despite difficulties. How many know when you start when you start doing the word and get serious about the word that the devil isn't just going to sit by and say, "Oh, glory to God, he's doing the word." He's going to try to stop you. All of a sudden, you face opposition. But you know, if you if you want to develop a body like this. You have to go to the gym and work out. Hmm? I may think, you know. I mean, actually, if you want to look like, like him, I was looking at him before, you know, his flat abs. I said, I remember when I used to look like that. <laughs> but I do go to the gym. My wife and I go to the gym three times a week. Amen. Glory. It means to persist in doing something. Done or persist with perseverance, attentive, attention, and painstaking. That's what diligent means. Constant in effort to accomplish something. Attentive and persistent in doing anything. Done or pursued, persevering, attention, painstaking. And persistent means persisting, especially in opposition, obstacles, discouragement, etc. Persevering, lasting or enduring, tenaciously, constantly, repeated, continued. So it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe to carefully, notice that, all of his commandments which I command you today, not just the ones that you like, but all, all, all his commandments, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Notice that God says, if you want me to lift you up above all the nations, then you have to be diligent to do what I say in my word and the things that I tell you by the Holy Ghost. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And two verses already emphasize the obedience twice. And I want you to notice something. Not only is the blessing going to manifest, but it's going to overtake you. You're going to be so blessed, you're going to tell God, God, please, I, I can't handle any more. I can't. I can't just... Just give me a break from all these blessings. How'd you like to get to that place? Huh? Well, it's in the Bible. But it requires something from us. And he says, bless you to be in the city, bless you to be in the country. It doesn't make any difference where you live. Bless you to be in the fruit of your body. Amen. Women that want to have children, you can, you can have children. The produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, that's prosperity and the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your netting bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. That's nice. huh? I've seen the Lord do that for me. 
Oh, I've seen people rise up against me. I've seen God. And I've done what the Bible says. I put my flesh down and I blessed them. And I prayed for them. And I've seen God deal with them. It says, They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you and in your storehouses and in all that you do and what you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Notice how many times he emphasizes prosperity. Now, I'll tell you something. When God commands the blessing upon you, there isn't a devil in hell can stop it. Yep. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if, here's the third time, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Three times he did the same, same thing. You got to keep my word. You got to be diligent about it. You have to be attentive. You have to carefully do what I say. Then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Why are they, why are they going to see that you're, you're called by the name of the Lord? Because they're going to see all these blessings manifested in your life. They're going to see the blessing of Abraham manifested in your life. Hmm? And the whole world is waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting on us. You know, Jesus isn't coming down here to do this. He's going to do it through us. He already did what he had to do. Now he says, 1 John 4, 17, As he is, so are we on this earth. You are my ambassador. The works that I do, shall you also do. And greater works. Because I go to my Father. And the Lord will grant you plenty. I'm going to tell you something. When we start walking in this, the government, the media, nobody's going to mess with the church. They'll be afraid to say something against the church. Those, those ding-dongs that, that you know, make fun of the things of God and call it you know, comedian, they'll be afraid. Yep. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, and the land which the Lord your short to your fathers to give, the Lord will still will open for you his good treasure in the heavens to give you the rain to your land in a season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. Glory to God. How'd you, how'd you, how would you like to get to a place in God where you no longer have to borrow money from the bank? Amen? Well, you go buy a car and you go to the dealer and the dealer says, oh, oh, you like that model? And you work out a deal. Uh, okay, uh, finance, no, no, no finances, I'm going to pay cash. Huh? You go buy a house, you go buy a house, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll get you a good loan, no, no, we're not looking for a loan here, we've we got cash. Cash. Huh? Oh, brother, that's just too hard to believe. Well, stay in the word, you'll get there. Faith coming by here. Amen. See, we, we serve a big God. We just have small thinking. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, in, I think it's Psalm 78, that Israel limited the Holy One of Israel. God has no limits. Glory to God. All things are possible with God. Mark 10, 27. And all things are possible with him who believes. Mark 9, 23. We're the ones that limit God with small thinking, small faith. Well, if you want to broaden your, your thinking and you want to enlarge your faith, you've got to feed it with the Word of God. Listen to some good, sound teaching. That will bring you up another level. Amen. The Lord will open his good treasure, the heavens, to give you the rain of your land in the season, and to break all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. That means that you're going to be the boss at work. You're not going to be the, the worker. You'll be the chief honcho and the big cheese. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above only and not beneath. Here's the fourth time. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left of the go after other gods to serve them. That's why you have to be attentive about this. You've got to stay on track. You can't go after other gods. And God's doesn't necessarily always mean an idol. It means, you know, in the form of a statue or, or, th or something like that. It means other things that become more important with God. Are you following me? 
And I love my wife, but she's not number one. God is number one. She's number two. And I expect that to be the same way with her, with me. You know, you can't make it have other gods. Now, I, I was planning just reading this scripture, but I, I felt impressed of the Lord to read one more. And it's in Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. And then we'll close. Second Chronicles, the 31st chapter. We'll start reading with verse 4 through 10. Now, when you have time, you start reading chapter 29, and you'll find that in chapter 29, a man named Ahaz was the king, and he was an ungodly king, and he, he led Israel into idolatry, into all kinds of sins, and, and um, they departed from God. And God raised up his son, Hezekiah, and he was a good king. And um, I used to wonder why such an evil king could produce a good king. And I was reading one time about his mother, and her, her name escapes me right now, but in, in, the, in the Hebrew it means God is my father. And it revealed to me that, that even though the king was ungodly, the wife, the mother was godly. And she raised up her son right. So Hezekiah became the king. And he saw what his father did. And one of the first things he did is he commanded the people, look at verse 4. Moreover, he commanded the people who dwell in Jerusalem to contribute support for the priests and the Levites that they might de devote themselves to the law of the Lord. Now, what happened was that uh, because of, uh, of uh, Ahaz, you know, worshiping other gods, uh, the people no longer went to the temple. They were following the king in idolatry, and, and the priests were not being supported, so the priests had to go out in the field and work. It was never the will of God. God told Joshua, when you divide the land, don't give the priest uh, any portion of the land because I am their inheritance. I'm going to support them through tithes and offerings. But the people weren't doing it, so they had to go out here in the field and work. So Hezekiah, the first thing he did and put in order was he commanded the people to contribute to the priests and the Levites that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought an abundance for the first fruits of grain, wine, oil, honey, and all the produce of the field, and they brought an abundantly tithe of everything. So what did they do? They immediately obeyed. Immediately. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of the oxen and the sheep, and also the tithe of the holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God, and they laid them in heaps. In the third month they began... Uh, laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. This is what the priest said. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty uh, left over, for the Lord has blessed his people what is left in this great abundance. Notice God blessed his people so much that they were able to take care of the ministry and, and, and the, the needs of the priests, and, 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 and the priests were able to minister to, to the, the people who had needs, and yet there was still plenty left over. Now this is in the Old Testament. Why? Because the people were obedient. Amen? And it, 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 the moment you start making a decision, I'm going to be obedient. From now on, come hell or high water, I don't care if my wife is obedient, I don't care if my kid, I'm going to be obedient. You make the decision, and you start doing it, all of a sudden, you begin to see God move in a new way. Let's stand up. I'm going to pray this prayer. If you need to make some adjustments in your own life, I don't know what God has said to you through the message, but you need to do, do that between you and God right there in your seat. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word that washes us clean from all sin, from all filthiness. And Lord, we want to examine ourselves in light of the word that we've heard. And if, if there are things in our lives that we need to make an adjustment on, if there are things that we need to confess before you, and make a, a quality decision to change them, we do it right now in Jesus' name. Just take a moment to examine your own heart. 
And if there's something there that God's dealt with you about, confess it to the Lord, forsake it, and you'll have mercy, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you that your blood washes us from all sin, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the power of your blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you're ready to make a quality decision that from this day on, you're going to obey God no matter what he tells you to do, I want you to say this with me to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I concentrate myself and you today to be obedient, to do your word, and to follow the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to walk in the fullness of your blessing. So I make a quality decision to be an obedient child of God every day. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm expecting, I'm expecting the good things to come your way. I'm expecting things to, to, to begin to pop. And when they do, you need to, you need to testify. Amen. You need to testify. You talk to who, uh, whoever, I don't know, I think uh, Robin's here next week. You talk to Joyce, all you got a testimony. I'll let you testify. Because it encourages others to do it, you know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can we get your singers to sing something? Thank you, Lord. Let's just wait on the Lord a little bit. There's a strong anointing in here. One of the things that the Lord said to me last year, as a matter of fact, he spoke it to me on a Wednesday night right in here. It was during the summertime. He reminded me. He said, I've given you a ministry of laying on of hands. Now, I've always laid hands on people. But he said to me, I want you to begin to lay hands on everybody that wants hands laid on in every service that you minister because there are things that I will do by my spirit. See, there are things that God does by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And so I have endeavored to do that in every service that I conduct, no matter where I'm at. I always give people an opportunity to come and to have hands laid upon them because there are things that God wants to do by his spirit. The Bible says it's not by power, by my, but by my spirit. And the anointing is strong in here right now. How many sense that anointing? Go ahead and sing something. Sing something about the glory and the power. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Fall on me. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin the glory to worship the, the Lord. Glory is here. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the glory. Is here. Yes, God's glory. Yes, God's glory is here. I can sense His mighty presence. Can sense Your mighty presence in the very atmosphere. In the very atmosphere. Whatever you may need, you just reach out and receive. Say it's mine. I take it now. I take it now. The glory is here. Yes, God's glory. Yes, yes God's glory is here. I can sense, I can sense His mighty presence in the very atmosphere. In the very Atmosphere. So whatever you may need, you just reach out 
and receive and say it's mine. I take it now. God's power is here. Hallelujah, Jesus. God's power is here. Yes, God's power. Yes, God's power is here. Yes, Lord. I can sense His body. I can sense His I command that crooked back right now to be made straight in the name of Jesus. Re-atmosphere. So whatever you believe. So whatever. You may need you just reach out and receive say it's mine I take it now I take it now Hallelujah Jesus Hallelujah Jesus Thank the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's sing, sing a little more, Joyce. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I just felt inspired to say that. If you, if, if you are, have a crooked back, I, 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 I let you go. Amen. The Holy Ghost has to say that. And then that crooked back thing made straight. Now, that's you, you claim it by faith. You have to claim things by faith when they're revealed. Amen. You got to take it. <laughs> Saturate me with your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. I got to have more of your anointing. In my life, saturate me, O oh Lord, today. Saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. I got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. We wait on as the Holy Spirit is moving in in our midst. And we wait, O oh Lord, for your manifested presence to come and touch us, come and refresh us, come and fill us, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. Saturate me in your anointing. Saturate me in your presence. I got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. Wait, our Lord, as the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst. And we wait, our Lord, for your manifest presence to come and touch us. 
come and refresh us come and fill us lord today saturate me in your anointing Saturate me in your presence. I just need more. I got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, O oh Lord, today. Saturate me in your anointing. to have more of your anointing in my life saturate Come here, Jeremy. If you want me to lay hands on you, come on out of your seat and come out of Speak to my heart and change my life. Manifest yourself in me. It's been a long time. Lord, you have stayed on my mind. There's a stirring in my soul and it causes me to know how much I Yeah. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the your impartation today through Brother Al. We thank you for the anointing that's felt in this place. Thank you, Father, for the words you've given them. And let us be a light unto your feet, Father, as, uh, as you go throughout the week. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've done today. And we just love to be in your presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Well, okay. Um, we are going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. The ushers will pass out the envelopes. Um, I was told this um, offering is strictly for the church today. So today's offering is strictly for the church. Um, Give as you are led. Um, I just want to give testimony of my own. I saw um, last year a lot how there are certain ministers that how they excelled um, financially in everything they did, um, health, whatever it was, and you know, especially in uh, in uh, prosperity stuff. Go see him. So uh, thank you, Father. Um, for this awesome Sunday we had today. Thank you for this turning point in your church. Thank you for the house that you've given us. We are so thankful and glad that we have a place to be. Um, and we're so excited for what you have for us this year. We thank you that you crowned the year with a bountiful, bountifulness, but now we start a new year, and we're reaping our harvest now. We send our harvester angels out, and we bring in our seed in Jesus' name. So, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. I'm in a fight, not physical. And I'm in a war, but not with this world. You are the light that's beautiful.